Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing our last and final makeover in our house. This is the one room we have not made over and that is our laundry room. So I'm showing you the first before of when it's super disgusting and dirty and this is actually kind of how it looks all the time. So one of my biggest things I want to accomplish in this room is to not let it become like a catch-all station because there are so many cupboards and places I can hide things. I have found that this room has kind of become just like where all the clutter ends up. So I have a few ideas of how I'm going to fix that problem by doing some exposed shelves and just making this room a lot nicer. I forgot to show you guys what the cabinets look like before I started cleaning them out. And this is actually with a lot of stuff out of here. So these were just jam packed full. I have some full bottles, but lots of empty bottles as well that I just have never thrown away. Um, and then I just cleaned out this one. Basically everything that's here on the floor and there's more stuff out there was all crammed into these cupboards. So this is just taking me going through things that we no longer need. I'm not going to need all this stuff up here. My plan is to have exposed shelves. So that's really helping me keep it organized and clean in here and not let these cupboards get crazy and cluttered again. Now that it's all been cleaned out, I want you guys to see how it looks bare. There's definitely nothing special about this room. I don't like the wallpaper. I do not like the flooring. I don't like the color in here, but I do love the structure of the room. I'm going to leave it just as it is. We are just going to be doing some really minimal upgrades, but even with really minimal upgrades, you can make the room look completely different. The first thing we're doing is removing these cupboards. Like I said, I wanted to have some exposed shelves and these shelves are perfect. We're going to do just a few things to them and paint them, but I feel like just by removing the doors, it made the room look a lot bigger in here. So right here where we took off the hinges, we just filled this in with some of this wood filler and then we sanded it down and now it's perfect. Like you can't even tell that there's anything there. So now this will paint over really, really nicely. I am measuring the distance in between each of these for the trim piece. So we're gonna put in the kind of matches that. It will look like it's meant to be an exposed cabinet when we put these additional trim pieces in. So it'll add a little bit of character to it. A little tip when you use this, some people prefer caulk, but when you use caulk on wood, the transition when you're painting it, you can tell where the caulk's at and where the wood's at. So I always say use wood filler instead of the caulk. I ended up using two different colors of paint and I will have those linked in the description box. So make sure you click the arrow below the video and you will see all of the links that I have. But as far as the paint goes, I painted the walls a light gray and then the doors and the shelves are just a little bit darker of a gray. What was, look how many layers. There was so one, many layers. Two, three, four layers Okay, that's of stuff. Holy cow, they just kept building on top of each other. That's crazy. Okay. He's, there's like two subfloors too. Ugh. 
Ugh, that's so weird. What a mess. I just wanted to show you guys an up close of the vinyl that we chose. This is similar to Pill and Stick, but it's a lot thicker and it feels like legit tile. So we've used something similar to this in our basement and we loved it. So this comes in a box of 30 and each little piece is 99 cents. We actually end up using 100 pieces in our room. So the whole floor cost us $100 plus the grout. This is a multi-purpose floor adhesive. So this is a vinyl tile, like a fake one, obviously. And it has a sticky back. So technically they say you can stick this down and get away with it. I wouldn't do that unless it was on a cement floor. This is a wood floor. So I use this all purpose adhesive. It's like the cheapest way to do it. And it still looks great. Like I did this in my basement. You cannot even tell that they're not tiles. Like I have challenged everyone to be like, what kind of flooring is that? And everyone agrees like, oh my gosh, that's tile. It's not, it's vinyl. But I use this multi-purpose adhesive because this seriously is the strongest glue. I've never had this stuff peel up on me and I've used it so many times. So when you put it onto the wood, it literally gets into the grain of the wood. And the only way to get this up is if you scrape it with a crowbar and, and rip half of the wood up with the tile. Um, since in my last video we did in the bathroom, I individually glued each one. But since I'm doing it like I'm gonna grout in between these, I'm just gonna do my whole line and each line I'm gonna go down and pre-glue it. Cause this glue takes a while to actually dry. You don't wanna walk on this for a full 24 hours after you set it. Something I love about these kinds of floors is you do not need any tools to do this. When it came to cutting them, we just used a razor blade and we were able to cut them just fine. So I was able to do half the floor. My husband did half of the floor. And honestly, guys, anybody could do this kind of flooring. After we let this sit overnight, the next thing we did was grout. And the color grout that we chose was a saddle gray and it's the vinyl tile grout. So make sure that that's the kind of grout you get with this flooring. Another thing that's important to know if you've never done this kind of flooring, as you are grouting, you only want to do small sections at a time because it dries really, really quickly. So you want to have your water handy and your tile sponge so that you can wipe it down scrub it really, really good, and then move on to the next section. This is the same countertop that we did in the bathroom, but we're gonna do it over the washer and dryer. So I've got my dimensions on it, and I just need to get a good square cut. You guys saw in the last video that 
to keep it the wood from splintering, I just tape it with painter's tape. So it makes it real easy to get done. Also, this is like your best friend, a square. I didn't even, I couldn't find it when I did the bathroom, but you definitely want this. This sounds weird, but I like using a sock or a rag anytime I stain something because it gives it like a much better look than using a brush. I don't know why, I just can't stand using brushes. This is my second coat I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do two coats over the whole thing to get rid of any marks that I can see. And you just rub it in. Kind of like a wipe on, wipe off method. Exactly. Otherwise it's, it's like too see dark. How you can see, see how you can see the wet streak still a little bit? Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see them, but you want to go over it until it's dry, spread it. Right here we are just painting the closet door and I wanted to add a little bit of interest to the door just because I feel like now that the cupboards are exposed there's really nothing interesting going on in the room. So I wanted to put some trim on the door. I will have the exact kind of wood my husband picked up but he just got one big piece of wood and then cut them into really small trim pieces so that he could trim in the door how I wanted. Normally I would shoot these in with a pin nailer, but because they're th so thin and the door so thin, I'm just gonna liquid nails them and then I'll clamp each side down and go through and do each one and give it enough time to dry. Liquid nails will hold it probably way better than a pin nail would anyway, so. Anytime you don't tear out old trim and you leave the original trim and then paint, it will leave like the paint partially inside of there unless you run through with a knife. But instead of doing that, I'm just going to take caulk and run it along it.
So for these knobs, which we never touch, like unless we're plugging it in, that's the only time we ever touch it. I am just going to be spray painting them with this flat black spray paint. And this is just something I have laying around. So hopefully this will work out just fine. For this next little project we are doing, we are building an accordion hook that we can hang like our broom and our Swiffer mop, our dustpan, those kinds of things on the wall. And the dimensions of this board is half an inch by one and a half. So it's half an inch thick and it's one and a half inches wide. And all we are doing is staining these, this golden oak, this is just some leftover, obviously, like we hardly used any of this when we did the countertop. So we're going to stain them this color. And then in this next clip, I will show you how we are making the hooks. I picked up this wooden dowel at Lowe's for around $3. And when I was picking up the other boards, I just made sure that this would fit onto the board easily and there would still be space on either side. So if you wanna build something similar to this, it doesn't matter what size board you're using, just make sure that they will all fit together. All I did here was spray paint this black and then we are going to go in and chop them up into little pieces and then we sand down any rough spots and then spray paint them again. So here is what we're working with. We are just going to do a little dab of wood glue on the bottom, right, or liquid nails? Liquid nails. Liquid, liquid nails on the bottom of them. And then we are going to flip this over and shoot it in from behind. All right, so. This actually does move, like it is an accordion, but I think if you use screws, you could wiggle it a lot more. We yeah. use pin nails, so if you it's more shoot, for looks. So like if you shot two pin nails in, uh -huh, then in a different spot, yeah, you, you wouldn't be able to, but you're because right. Because there's just one. <laughs> so we got measurements from a, another video and mm -hmm. we did it exactly and they were really off. So we're not even really sure exactly what the measurements are here. Um, I'll I'm try to find, <laughs> I'll, I'll try to find some kind of plan and I will leave that in the description of this video. So if you guys want to make your own, it was way cheaper. Uh, I paid three dollars for a board. I think what did you use one and a half boards and then I used one actually. one board for this whole thing It was three dollars and then these peg pieces. It was just one big board or whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> And we just chopped it up into a bunch of little pieces. So Literally, this was like six dollars to do and then we use leftover stain from our countertop I actually found these baskets at our local grocery store, so I will try my hardest to find these online or try and find something similar because I really love how deep these are and they were just a few dollars. Anyway, the only thing I'm putting in these baskets are things that we actually use in the laundry room.
I just wanted to explain a little bit of what's going on here. So, I actually just found those printables. I thought they were kind of cute. And I put those in some Dollar Tree frames. Over here in this section, I thought it'd be smart to put things that I use for the dryer, since this is right on top of our dryer. So I have our dryer sheets here, our dryer balls here. This is obviously just a candle for looks. Paper towels we usually kept in this closet, and they were just always in the wrapper, thrown in there somewhere. So I like having them there a little bit better so you can see them. We have our all-purpose cleaner here. This is stuff we go through really quickly, and then extra laundry soap and fabric softener as well as our fabric softener and laundry soap here. I just thought these jars were super cute and I wanted to display them here on top of the washer. Moving in to our storage closet. I'm so mad I didn't show you guys the before of our storage closet because it was so bad. So up here is just, again, some extra stuff that we actually use. And then right here, this is actually where we keep our cat and our dog food. So I loved having these. We just got these trash cans at Walmart. And then down here, this is just some extra pieces to our vacuum and our dog brush. And then our iron, ironing board, and steamer. So it is just so nice to finally have everything organized, only have items in here that we actually use. And I just love it. I love how it feels in here. So here at the end of the video, I will do some before and after shots of each little section so you guys can really compare the difference. 